Um, so I am Jennifer Rakovich. I do outpatient medical nutrition therapy here at mm -hmm. Tri-State. And it's been five years since we've been able to do something in person for National Nutrition Month. So this is really awesome. Um, thanks for coming and getting some of your points for National Nutrition Month. Um, so every year in March, we do celebrate National Nutrition Month. So Nutrition Month was first started in 1973 as National Nutrition Week. <coughs> because there was so much interest in 1980, um, they expanded it to an entire month. So that's where National Nutrition Month got started. This year's theme is Beyond the Table, which highlights the farm to fork aspect of nutrition, addresses the many ways and places that we eat, emphasizes substantiality efforts and showcases the expertise of nutrition. And beverages on a regular basis. Um, it does not promote any form of restriction um, or requires you to eat in a certain way. Provides the needed energy and nutrients for the body to feel good physically and psychologically. So yes, there is room for chocolate and there is room for brownies and a healthy eating routine. It's all about balance. A healthy eating routine, it does include at least three balanced meals a day. And it may even um, need a few snacks in there too. And that's to make sure that your body's getting a variety of nutrients throughout the day. If we're skipping meals or only getting you know, a couple eating opportunities, we're most likely not getting our nutritional needs in. We want to have a routine that is rich in fiber, either from um, whole grains, or other plant starches, lots of fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, unsaturated fats coming from plants, and then overall less added sugars and less saturated fats. So where does one start with developing a healthy eating routine for themselves? First, you have to know your current eating habits. The easiest way to do that is just to take a few days, at least three days, um, maybe a whole week, um, definitely include the weekdays and the weekend, and just write out what it is that you're eating. We learn a lot about ourselves um, from documenting our trends throughout the day. So that way you can see what positive things are you already doing for your health through food and what are some maybe unhealthy habits that you currently have. Like, I'm just gonna throw out a sugary Red Bull drink every afternoon or just have a um, habit of getting chocolate chip cookies for that 2 p.m. snack. And again, it's all about moderation, but just kind of recognizing what are your current habits and it's like, hmm, am I relying on this too much? Is there a swap that I can make there? And look at your healthy habits you already have that you can celebrate on. Like maybe you're already a great fruit vegetable eater, so that's awesome. Um, take a look at your schedule and decide when you'll set aside times for meals and snacks. I've met many clients that just don't take time for breakfast. They find they're too busy or they work through their lunch break. And so seeing how can you adjust your routine to make sure you're taking time to put these um, healthy meals together. And again, snacks may be needed in your day to get those nutrients that you need. Some people do prefer eating smaller amounts more often, so that might be what is the best option for you. So we have an idea of what we want our pattern to look like, then we have the meal planning side, and that's something we want to keep simple as well. So you want to have a good idea of what your plan is for the week. 
a grocery shop according to that. I like to take Sunday to kind of plan ahead, look at the week, look at what we have going on in the evenings, um, see what nights I can actually take time to cook a full meal or what are the nights that I'm gonna need leftovers or something just really quick to grab um, that is a little bit easier to prepare. Definitely keep your pantry and fridge stocked as much as possible um, with necessities to build a complete meal. The best way you can do that is by keeping an ongoing, ongoing grocery list um, so you aren't without those key staples. So we're gonna talk about what are some of those key staples to have in your household so you are prepared at all times. You might not use these on a routine basis, but they're there, so when you do need them, you know, if you didn't plan for the week, they're there. So some great whole grain options would be whole wheat pastas, brown and wild rice, quinoa. There might be some other ancient grains that you enjoy eating to keep stocked. Um, oats, your beans, peas, and lentils, these can be dried or in canned version. Vegetable or chicken stock, pasta sauce, tomato sauce or tomato paste, canned tomatoes, salsa, canned vegetables if you're out of your fresh or frozen. Canned tuna and salmon can be a really quick option for protein. Olive oil and avocado oil for cooking or for making a quick salad dressing from scratch with apple cider vinegar. Nuts and nut butters for a quick protein source. And then some of our seeds, chia, flax, hemp, pumpkin, and safflower. We'll talk about using some of these. I'm actually surprised, like I don't like tomatoes, but I am surprised how often I actually use canned tomatoes and tomato sauce in recipes and a lot of quick meals. And that um, low sugar jar tomato uh, spaghetti sauce, how often I grab those in an emergency. Um, so they are nice things to keep on hand. Some other pantry staples, um, popcorn kernels for popping, make a great snack. Uh, granola bars, there's a large variety of granola bars out there. Um, just keeping an eye out for sugar content, look for ones that have a whole grain base, maybe some dried fruit or some nuts in them. A variety of whole grain crackers, rice or nut, rice or nut crackers. Whole grain cereals with little to no added sugar. Some whole grain breads or sourdough breads, dried fruit and honey. And notice most of those grain options, I did say whole grain. We want to get those nutrients from our whole grains. They're also rich in fiber, which help sustain us longer. It doesn't mean <coughs> everything has to be 100% whole grain, but again, just keeping that variety in there is helpful. I'm not going to read through all these, but just the list of herbs and spices to keep on hand. And again, they're ones that um, just keep stock. You might have to replace them every year or so to keep them fresh, but most simple recipes do call for these different herbs and spices. So a lot of great flavors here to flavor up your food. Um, having a nice herb blend that does not have salt in it is really helpful. Costco has a great one that I put on my proteins, my potatoes, all my vegetables. It's just a nice herb and vegetable blend seasoning. Um, there's a lot of other ones out there. Fridge staples. Um, a variety of dairy products. These again can work as a quick protein substitute. Just a quarter cup of cottage cheese is one ounce of protein. Um, so it's a great one if you don't have time to cook a protein or you forgot to take the meat out of the freezer. Um, or cheeses, plain Greek yogurt is also rich in protein. Eggs is an easy one. Butter and margarine. The salmon wine vinegar I put in the fridge. Some people say keep it in the fridge. Some say you don't have to. I threw it on a fridge staple. Um, the Dijon mustard and the soy sauce. So those last three, they're again just staples I find that are in a lot of the simple recipes I use just to create a marinade or a simple salad dressing that bring a lot of flavor. So they're nice ones to keep on hand. And of course freezer staples hitting each food group there, just having that back up again to replenish as um, your fresh foods are diminishing. So with produce, there's produce that lasts a bit longer and some that we need to eat up within the week. So this list here, these ones usually last a bit longer, so they're nice to have on hand, even if you don't plan on using them in a specific menu item for that week. Um, see, A lot of these, like the carrots, cauliflower, celery, broccoli, um, those when I buy them, I just chop them up that day and I put them in individual containers, so that way through that busy week, 
you have them cut up ready to go. Um, you can do a quick little relish tray for dinner for your vegetable serving and throw them in a Ziploc or a baggie to bring to work to snack on. So having them prepped also on the weekend will make you more successful for bringing those produce into um, your work day. The spaghetti squash, sweet potatoes, yams, a variety of different potatoes, those work really well as a quick start. If you don't you know, want to do the rice or pasta, these are a great energy source to keep on hand. I have a little basket on the counter. I just always make sure I have those items in that basket. So they're a really quick way to throw a meal together. So our weekly produce, now this one you want to have a plan for. You want to know how are you going to use these weekly produce in your diet. So you might not buy every one every single week, but you get a variety throughout the month. Um, some of us might love avocados, and we might eat, get them made up throughout the week. Um, the berries, blueberries is one that I would kind of eat like medicine, take a handful every single day. They're so packed with nutrients. And so you just kind of develop these habits and incorporate them into your um, daily eating habits. Spinach is another one. I keep a package of spinach on top of my eggs. So my habit is when I heat up my pan, I put a little olive oil in the pan, rip up some spinach leaves, and then crack my egg on top of it. And so that's how I get a dark green breakfast time. So I just keep it with that food item so I remember to use it. So we're stocked, we have all this food available, now how do we put the meal together? It's all about being mindful in the moment and try to think, okay, where do I wanna start? A lot of people like to start with their protein. What protein do they have in thought? Um, or just maybe what sounds good to them. Then you wanna pick that grain or starch to match with it, and then try to fill half of your plate with fruits and vegetables there. Getting comfortable with cooking vegetables in different ways can be really helpful. Um, some people obviously prefer raw vegetables like or salads um, over steamed or roasted vegetables, but the different ways you prepare <laughs> them, you're getting different flavor profiles. So um, getting experience there is helpful. Um, so we listed out a few different options for those proteins and greens and starches to choose from to create your meal. So like I mentioned, when you look at your plate, you want to try to visualize half of your plate going to fruits and vegetables. There should be a lot of color there. The other half, you quarter to your proteins and then your grains and starch. That really does help with portion sizing too because that's generally going to give you the right portion sizes for a meal. But everybody's needs are a little bit different. Snacks, um, we definitely might need snacks. So if we have meals that are larger than four to five hours apart, you're gonna get hungry. And so having a plan for those snacks is gonna help you stay successful too with having a healthy eating routine. A matching up carb and protein together is gonna give you more sustained energy. If you eat an apple by itself, it might only fill you up for about an hour, but if you add maybe a cheese stick to that or a little bit of peanut butter, that's gonna fill you up for two to three hours. So you'll have a lot better energy and it will prevent that sugar crash in the afternoon. So you can see we combined the cheese and cracker. We have some veggies with hummus. Hummus offers a plant protein source and is rich in fiber. Um, the apple and peanut butter there. And I love this idea too, just having a variety of different snack options. So you can just kind of pick from it throughout the day and what sounds good. So we have a variety of different grains, proteins, nuts, and some fruit there. And some of us, if you're a small eater, you might need those snacks just to get the adequate nutrition in for the day too. So knowing what your specific needs are, it can be figured out pretty easily. Um, everybody's individualized based off of age, height, weight, your activity level, male or female, um, that determines your needs. So one easy place that you can go to get that is on myplate.gov. They have a MyPlate plan where you can go and plug in your information there and it will spit out a generalized calorie amount with how many servings that you would need from each food group to meet those calorie needs. So it just kind of gives you a good start there. But did you know that 90% of the US population does not meet the recommendation for vegetables and 80% does not meet their recommendations for fruit. So how many of you did the fruit and vegetable challenge last month? So hopefully you guys are met your fruit and vegetable quota. <laughs> but so it's something to think about, you know, that we are just not there. Okay. 
So what does that look like? This is based off of a 2,000 calorie diet. One needs about two cups of fruit and two and a half cups of vegetable a day. So if your calorie needs increase, those portions increase. If the calorie needs are lower, that's gonna be a little bit lower too. But just gives you something to shoot for. So National Nutrition Month is a great month to focus on getting more fruits and vegetables in and focusing on the colors of the rainbow. So we're gonna break it down by those rainbow colors and just kind of give you a good glimpse of what are some different produce out there that you might wanna think about incorporating into um, your daily routines. So our red and pinks, um, they are known for heart health, healthy vision, immunity and may reduce cancer risks. So first one is an apple. It made me think of that um, old saying, eat an apple a day, keep the doctor away. So it's promoting heart health, vision, reducing cancer. So we have a wide variety of here. Uh, just kind of take a glance and see, is there any fruits or vegetables here that I haven't had in a long time? Um, and just think about how you might be able to incorporate them in. We have our oranges and yellows. You know, most of these you're gonna see, they do promote heart health. You know, we are getting a lot of antioxidants in all these colors, so they're all gonna help uh, reduce risk of some form of cancer as well. Um, see a lot of different fruits available. So the vegetables here, um, this is again where we can choose our sweet potatoes, yams, um, squash as our starch serving in place of a grain. Um, pumpkin, we often think of that in the fall. My family loves to make pumpkin waffles. My kids love them so much that we make them year round. So they're getting um, a vegetable in their waffles in some mornings or dinners. So finding some fun ways to incorporate them too. Our greens, we often hear those dark greens are really good for us. Um, they are very helpful with cancer prevention as well as healthy vision. So a variety here. Um, these greens, besides our vegetables, they also include the green herbs and also green tea. Our blues and purples. Now, we often think of these as strong antioxidants and also anti-aging benefits as well as helping memory, urinary tract health, and reducing cancer risk. Um, so our, our berries are really um, beneficial here. Some other ones that might not be as common, um, dates, those are a really good one to chop up and put in your hot cereal in the morning or to eat as a snack with nuts. And I wanted to give a shout out to purple carrots and purple cauliflower. If you have not tried these, they are amazing roasted with just a little olive oil and sea salt. And you can get purple cauliflower pretty regularly up at Grocery Outlet mm -hmm. in Lewiston. It is so yummy, it's like candy. A little sea salt, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, really good. Don't forget white and brown. These two are very high in nutrients, great for heart health and reducing um, cancer risk. Bananas, they got put in the yellows and the whites. Um, brown pear, white peaches, and then cauliflower, daikon radish, and jicama. Those are two that are also good chopped up and put into salads. They're just not as common. Um, parsnips are a great fall vegetable to roast. So we made it through the rainbow, but think, speaking of plants, um, I wanted to focus on the beans, peas, and lentils, also known as pulse crops. We live in an area where we are surrounded by a lot of farm fields and some pulse crop growers. So we want to take advantage of those local protein options too. I'm going to get plant protein sources and about a half a cup offers seven grams of protein, which is the same as one ounce of meat protein. They're also rich in fiber. A half a cup can give you anywhere between five to 10 grams of fiber. A lot of it is soluble fiber, which we know for heart health and helping to reduce our cholesterol levels. It's less expensive than meat protein, so it is a great option if you're on a budget or just trying to incorporate in throughout the week for overall health. And it has a more positive impact on our environment. Also our nuts and seeds, um, rich in plant protein, fiber, and then our heart healthy fats. Um, listed out some nuts here, they can also be consumed in the nut butter versions. But our variety of seeds, you know, these are a great little item to just sprinkle on yogurts and to hot cereals, sprinkle on salads. Again, a lot of nutrients. It only takes about a teaspoon or so, and you get some great protein, fiber, and heart healthy fats there. 
Um, you can buy combo shakers that have the chia, flaxseed, and hemp seed together. So that's a nice one to keep in your cupboard. So our overall goal is we want to paint our plate with more color. So I gave a few ideas here and kind of colored it out so you could see those colors jump out. Um, I mentioned my love for the scrambled eggs with some spinach in it, just a pinch of, mo pinch of mozzarella cheese, some whole grain toast and strawberries. Now remember our goal is three to five food groups a meal to ensure your body's getting a variety of nutrition here. We have rolled oats, we're adding cinnamon, um, diced apple, walnuts with a splash of milk. Oh. Which, Greek yogurt, plain will give you a bit more protein with less sugar, adding some chia seed, granola, blueberries and raspberries to nut, a slice of whole grain toast with nut butter or and a sliced banana on top. So for some lunch ideas, taking a whole grain tortilla, you got your lean protein in there, then add in some spinach leaves and then we'll take our diced up vegetables like our peppers, cucumbers, and top those in there and add some orange slices on the side. You can make any whole grain sandwich with some lean protein and then add those toppings again to get more color. Have a side of raw veggies to go along with that and then a fruit such as red grapes. Am I doing anything there? Um, baked sweet potato. Now we're going to choose some cottage cheese for our protein or some shredded cheddar, some steamed broccoli with some strawberries on the side, and just as we had for lunch today, some lentil soup with a side salad. You're getting your protein, your fiber, it's high in iron, magnesium, you're getting a lot of nutrients there. Some basic dinner ideas, again, we have our um, lean protein, we have some red potatoes for our starch with some roasted Brussels sprouts, baked chicken with ground rice, stir fried vegetables there of a variety of different colors. And whenever you make something like that, make leftovers so you have it for another meal. Um, if you do a pan of roasted vegetables, just do a surplus. So again, you have those sides that you can bring to lunch with you. Some roasted um, vegetables blended in with some whole wheat penne noodles and salmon on the side. And then we have a large salad with some extra vegetables, garbanzo beans, sliced chicken breast, and some strawberries. A few snack ideas to get more color in. Hummus or a bean dip with a variety of raw vegetables, sliced apple um, and nut butter, a yogurt parfait with some berries and granola, um, cottage cheese and a fruit. So another one we love to do at home is a quesadilla with mozzarella cheese, um, diced spinach, and we dip it in marinara sauce. Whole grain crackers with sliced cheese and pear slices. So we don't have to have recipes to make these meals. But if you like looking at recipes, one of my favorite sites um, is Real Food Dietitians. They have amazing recipes, simple ingredients, really easy to make. Um, they have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. So if you like to get some fun ideas, that's a great one. Um, a lot of the recipes have worked great for having leftovers too. Um, pulses.org is a really good one to get recipes for your pulse crops if you'd like to experiment with that some anywhere from your soups and salads entrees to desserts and we there's a lot of phone apps out there that might be really handy too yumly is one of my favorites if i have a few ingredients and i'm not sure what to do with them i'll just plug them into that app and it will spit out some different recipes that you could um, try with that Pinterest, of course, you know, it's easy to get recipes on Pinterest just to kind of give you an idea if you're not sure how to use a certain vegetable or um, starch of some sort. So there's a lot of other ones out there. It's just anything that gives you ideas, kind of helps um, keep you motivated. So since we're putting all this effort into buying and prepping some of this produce, we want to get as much nutrients from those foods as possible. So some ways we can make sure we're getting uh, more bang for a buck with nutrients is to keep those edible peels on the fruits and vegetables. Just wash them up good. Um, steaming rather than boiling to retain most of the nutrients. Vitamin B and C um, can start to disappear as the longer that we boil our produce. Cut vegetables into larger pieces so there's less surface area exposed, um, helping to keep in those vitamins when you're cooking. Um, when you do cook the vegetables, uh, just cook to where they're tender and crisp or eat them raw to keep in those nutrients. And the shorter cooking times helps to keep the color, flavor, and those nutrients. A seasonal produce, of course, that's going to really help with the budget. Um, inside the folder, 
Uh, we do have all the colors of the fruits and vegetables laid out. And there's also, um, by, I think it's by season, different produce that is available. So that can be a nice guide there. Um, so shopping for food in season. Um, also taking that time to can and freeze that produce so you have them year round. Um, shop at your local farmer markets. If you have any neighbors that have great gardens, definitely use their foods too so they're not going bad. Or try growing your own garden. Um, the Assault County does have a master gardener program um, where you can get um, specifics on gardening, learn about your our area here and what grows best when. Um, they also have a lot of classes and I think that's something that might be coming in the future. <laughs> so um, there's a great resources out there. But if you would personally like to improve your current eating habits um, and would benefit from personalized guidance, your registered dietitians can help you with your personal goals. Um, so everybody is individual and unique and has different nutritional needs and food preferences, right? We're not all the same. So why work with a dietitian? Like I mentioned, you receive personalized nutrition information for your unique health goals. Um, we offer continued support and encouragement. Um, so a dietitian can meet with you once a week, every other week, or once a month, or just twice a year to check in. Sometimes it's just nice to, to have that conversation about food. Um, we can address uh, nutrition needs for a wide variety, just general disease prevention or health concerns, weight management, blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, um, irritable bowel syndrome, diabetes, food allergies, um, and other chronic diseases. Um, some of the basic resources that we often use in our practice and um, in this PowerPoint. All right, I did it, so great. <laughs> Awesome. I hope that was encouraging for you guys. Just give you a few simple tips. A lot of it is basic information, but we just forget to use it in our day-to-day -day habits. So I hope that leads you to a little bit of a healthier journey in your future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.